What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and straight up, I was wrong. You were right. So for the past few months, I have been getting relentless questions asking why I haven't checked out the Razer G502. JK, the Razer Basilisk Ultimate. And I think the reasoning behind that is because this came out just a few days or weeks after the Viper Ultimate came out. And that's been my main mouse since released. So I think it was kind of like out of sight, out of mind. I didn't pay any attention to this because I was content with the Viper Ultimate. But I say that because you guys know I would go to war for the G502. I've been using this and previous iterations of it since 2014. So for five years, I was used to this and this shape. And then you look at the Basilisk Ultimate and they pretty much are the same shape. They're twinning, 100%. So, for people who've used this and loved it, can you say the same for the Basilisk Ultimate? Yes, this mouse flew under my radar, 110%. So in terms of physical appearance, I already alluded to it, but the shape is damn near identical to the G502. It's ergonomic, it has that thumb rest on the left side, the angular and aggressive left and right paddles, all that jazz. And also when talking physical appearance, it is 130 millimeters long, 75 millimeters wide, which also includes the thumb rest, but without it, just the width of the actual body, 62.5 millimeters wide, and it stands 42 millimeters tall. On my scale, it comes in at 106 grams, which is a bit lighter than the G502 Lightspeed at 114 grams. So for those dimensions, it is definitely on the medium to larger side of a gaming mouse. However, I'm still firmly in the camp that, you know, a heavy mouse isn't gonna make you a worse gamer. But I get in today's craze of lightweight mice that yes, these are kind of out of shape, if you will. As for some of the other physical features, we have 11 total buttons here. And on the left side, above where your thumb sits, there's this little piece of rubber that comes off, giving you the potential to add their optional, pretty much paddle here. We've seen this on the previous Basilisk mice. And on the G502, this is their sniper button, but this you can obviously program to be whatever you want. Both the left and right side of the mouse has this really nice rubberized texture to it for enhanced grip. Your thumb just sits perfectly in that groove there. Big fan of that. And yes, as you can see, we do have some RGB lighting. The scroll wheel lights up, the Razer logo obviously illuminates, and we have a strip on both the left and right side. Although that right side strip is kind of pointless because it is so small there. No one's ever gonna see that, but yes, we do have RGB. Flipping the mouse over, we have six feet that are definitely equivalent to Hyperglide. This is the 100% virgin PTFE. Very, very smooth, helps your mouse just coast along a mouse pad surface. You can see on the top and bottom, plus underneath the thumb rest there where that fin kind of sticks out and around the sensor. You're on and off button to the left and above that is a profile switcher. Another interesting thing to note is the resistance wheel. So if you want it, you know, slower and super tactile, you can adjust that. Or if you want it, you know, nice and smooth and silent, you can adjust to that as well or find a happy in-between spot. We don't have anything close to what the G502 provides with their hyper scroll, which is kind of a bummer, yeah. But I do like the option to really customize it and fine tune it. You'll see under the sensor, we have the two contact points for hooking this up to the dock. And what this dock does is it lets you pretty much charge this when you're not using the mouse. You set the mouse on the metallic contacts and then it'll automatically charge your mouse for you. Now the mouse features the same technology from the Viper Ultimate, which includes their 20,000 DPI Focus Plus optical sensor and their optomechanical switches inside, which are rated for 70 million clicks. I'll do a sound test now so you could hear all the goods of the mouse. Now, I just wanna talk about my experience with it and how it felt to game. Spoiler, very good and almost nostalgic to a point. There's just something to be said about muscle memory. It's quite incredible how your body can just naturally adjust to things and pick up where it left off. And since the grooves and the shapes are just so identical to the G502, using this was like, you know, it, it was like home, you know what I'm saying? Since I used that mouse for five years, 
It just felt natural in my hand. So when switching over to a mouse like this, there was absolutely no delay. I felt like I was still using that mouse. But now, since we technically have a more reliable updated technology in the Basilisk Ultimate, it's going to perform better. And you could just, you know, roll your eyes at that. But the fact is, it is 25% faster than what Logitech uses in their light speed technology. Also, due to their optical switches versus just traditional mechanical switches in most gaming mice, since these are using the infrared beam to detect when you actually press down the clicks, that signal is immediately sent to your PC. And again, you could roll your eyes, but it is true. The technology they use here is superior. And on my desk, just for reference, I even had the G502 Lightspeed on, as well as my Viper Ultimate. So there were three different wireless peripherals on my desk, and there was no problems, which is definitely a good thing to see, because that means that like lands and stuff, if you're at a party and there's other people with wireless mice, typically there would be some sort of interference or issues, but that was not the case at all. Longtime users and lovers of the G502, you're not gonna skip a beat with the Basilisk Ultimate. Now, one of the more annoying things with a Razer and their mice is the fact that you do need Synapse. And let's face it, it's just annoying to have to need and rely on software. Um, so once you get that all downloaded, you can go in and configure it and you can save some profiles. It's kind of limited. You could save your DPI settings and stuff to this, but it does not save your actual lighting profiles. So for those used to Synapse, you can go in, you can remap the uh, the buttons on the mouse and stuff. And that's one of the first things I did, like I mentioned. I changed the uh, toggling of the DPI for those two buttons below the scroll wheel. I just changed one to cycle and the other one on the bottom to be pausing music and stuff for Spotify. I don't know. In that additional paddle that they have, I've always been used to that being a sniper button, but I changed that to their hyper shift so I could pretty much access like a secondary row of functions and stuff now. I don't really use it too often and it is kind of slightly out of place. I wish it was a bit closer to my thumb, uh, but it is there if I ever need to remap those to, like I said, some secondary functions. Next is the performance tab for obviously adjusting your sensitivity, so your DPI, setting the stages as well as the pulling rate. I just have two DPIs um, on the mouse because that's just the way I prefer it. I don't want to accidentally toggle it and have it go all crazy amounts. So I just have one at 450, which is what I've been testing this mouse on on my particular mouse pad and a second one at 600 which is my my native dpi if you will and then for rgb this is again it's the same stuff you can add the preset effects make it you know the wave the rainbow do a static color breathing in and out but since you have 14 individual zones here for both the left and right strip the mouse wheel itself and then the logo uh, you can change those independently as well so you can have certain effects on certain areas of this mouse if I were you, I would keep it just at like 10% brightness. Help that battery. And speaking of battery, this is rated for 100 hours, which is definitely better than the Viper Ultimate. That is obviously with lighting turned off. So if you keep lighting, like I said, 10% on, don't, don't be doing anything too crazy in terms of lights, you're still gonna be getting phenomenal battery life out of this. I've been using this now for two weeks and just from being used to the Viper Ultimate, I have been putting it back on the dock. Uh, but I've, I think the most I've seen it get down to is 70%. So you're not gonna have any issues uh, with this battery life, which is definitely good for a wireless mouse. You can also help extend the battery life in the power tab in Synapse by the wireless power saving, which is like how many minutes this stays idle until the uh, mouse completely turns off to help save battery. Same with the low power mode once it gets below a certain percentage. And then real quick is the calibration tab for adjusting to your mouse pad. The smart tracking pretty much calibrates your mouse pad surface and the asymmetric cutoff will pretty much determine your liftoff distance automatically for you. So bringing it all together, my experience has been a 10 out of 10. I love this mouse. I I definitely feel bad for overlooking it. I wish I would have looked at it earlier and used it, but at the same time, I'm still very content with my Viper Ultimate because of the main difference there is the weight. So while yeah, 106, 107 grams is gonna be still more than people want nowadays, for me, it's not a big issue, but it obviously would have been nice to have that cut down a bit. The only thing that I really, really wish this included that we have on the uh, G502 is that scroll wheel with the hyper scroll. It's, uh, it's something special for sure, but yeah. Now this mouse is not cheap and it's not for everybody. This comes in at $170 
with the gaming dock. So that is definitely pretty pricey. It's all gonna depend on your financial situation and how fat your wallet is. So, I mean, it's definitely a good mouse and if you do pick it up, you're not gonna have buyer's remorse. And they also sell a different Basilisk X hyperspeed version, which is a battery operated Bluetooth version as well, which kind of does do away with all the good features that makes the Basilisk Ultimate worth it. So you have no adjustable scroll wheel, there's no RGB, like you don't have that additional paddle to add to the mouse. There's no hyperglides, it's a 16K optical sensor, but it's much cheaper at just $60. And the battery life here is pretty crazy. For up to 450 hours over Bluetooth, or if you wanna use the hyperspeed dongle that comes with it, you get 285 hours, they say. But yeah, talk to your wallet first, see how it's feeling. And all right guys, that'll wrap it up. If you wanna check any of these mice that I showed off today out, obviously including the Basilisk Ultimate, I have it for you in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed, have a good day.